This is certainly one of the most exciting times in the year uh, for the gardener, particularly if you grow veg, because you will have placed your seed orders and they will start to arrive now, whether it be the seeds, the seed potatoes, or the onion sets. Now, in order to get everything ready and do it properly, the first thing you need to do is to take the potatoes out of the bag they've come in, or whether you've gone to the garden centre and got them, and then you go through a process called chitting. And by that, you will take an egg carton and put each potato in each one where an egg would go and allow the shoots to start to come through. As they do, you will turn on the windowsill, in the light, and just turn them around and let them do what they're doing there naturally. Now the thing is that when you go to plant them out towards the end of the, the month, you will then find there are quite a few shoots come here. Really, you only need about three or four, and the rest you can discard. Another useful tip is whilst they're in this stage, if you get some maxi crop or liquid seaweed, and with a very fine jet, just spray over every now and again. Believe you me, that will increase the amount of spuds you lift at the end of the season. Now this is what you don't want to do. These are potatoes that you would normally be cooking and they've started to sprout. And people misguidedly think, ah, we can plant those out. The potatoes that you chit are seed prepared potatoes. They're grown specifically to produce spuds um, later in the season. These are not. So don't waste your time, just keep eating them. And when they arrive, the first thing you need to do is take them out of the container they're in and you go through a process called chitting. Chitting is where you want to encourage the growth in advance of planting it. As you can see, um, an egg container is ideal, it could be a tray. They want to be placed on a sill somewhere near the light, but what they don't need is a radiator right next door. So it just needs to be light and airy, frost free. And the chilling process has started, as you can see. One of the things that you can do to encourage good strong growth is each week spray them with a light uh, spray of liquid seaweed that can be purchased in any good garden centre. Give them a spray over. That will make these shoots nice and strong. But the benefit is you'll get twice the yield as if you hadn't done it in the first place. So these are coming along nicely now. So when you take the potato and you've got it there, you want about three or four nice sized, robust shoots on the top. Too many, and that will weaken the distribution to the rest. So although it might sound um, dreadful, if you've got about seven shoots on there, remove about three of them, evenly spaced, and that's just about perfect and ready to plant. However, you can have the situation where you get the potato actually producing from the bottom. That's where we want them on the top and not at the bottom. So in this case, I'd be tempted to rub those side shoots off in order to encourage more up there. To prepare the ground, you will have given it an, a liberal amount of compost, uh, your own recycled compost, or farmyard manure and you will place that in the bottom of the trench and then lightly cover that with soil you don't want to place this potato straight onto the compost and then you will dig out or hoe out a trench um, planting about um, three four five six inches down and then having done that you push the soil evenly over the top you will also note the mistake people make is they do not keep the label with it so they don't remember. As soon as you've actually planted the row, then either attach that to a string, sometimes even better, to put the name on there. More importantly, on the back of the label, write the date that you actually planted. It's a good guide for future years when you think, that's when I put them in, they did really well. We dug out the, uh, the, the trench room to go in. It's well composted because they're greedy little feeders potatoes. And then you place the spuds at an even uh, distance apart, six to eight inches apart in the line. Soil over the top. Then, when you see the first sign of shoots appearing out of the ground, 
you grow through the process of earthing up. Now, in order to give the soil, the, the, uh, the actual potatoes, enough earthing up material, do not plant the rows too close together, because otherwise, if you do, you're never going to get enough soil up. The purpose of earthing up is to force that potato to grow again through the soil and then again through the soil. And each time you're suppressing him, that makes him produce bigger, stronger shoots. And you'll end up with a decent sized earthed up ridge all the way down the line. If we hit some very hot, dry patches, then it would pay to water as well. People may think that, uh, you know, it's wasting time, but it will help to keep the plant moist and the other thing sometimes you can do is through the trench separating the rows is put a mulch down. Now that mulch will help to retain the water in the summer that would evaporate as soon as the sun comes out. So you're earthing up and earthing up. Eventually you'll get your potatoes up to here. The time to dig when the flowers have finished flowering. As soon as the potato starts flowering, you know it's time to start harvesting.